Jackson, you're locked and loaded. Any skitties come around these corners, you watch our back. I'll be outside. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Spartan 117 GW. I'm joined here by Jack from Clone or Die. Hi. And uh, we're actually even going over a bunch of our, our Black Hawk Down slash Gothic Serpent kit, specifically mm -hmm. the Delta kit. Um, it's actually this year, it's the 30th anniversary of the Battle of Mogadishu. And one of the things that's kind of interesting with you know our community and like you know history from different uh, battles and whatnot is you end up finding like, both airsofters, reenactors, and impressionists are kind of the ones keeping that history alive, um, other than the people who are from the battle themselves. Because, I mean, there's frankly a lot of the guys who were there that maybe don't talk about it as much these days, but one of the guys that's been doing a very good job of kind of keeping it fresh in people's minds and giving his personal account is uh, Brad Howling. So he's got his own whiskey company too, so check that out. And that guy's all been awesome supporting a lot of the guys from the Task Force Ranger group that we made on Facebook. There's a link in the description. Before we get too deep in the weeds, just want to give a shout out. Thanks to Save Equipment for kind of helping build out the new Armory Studio here. Also, if you see us shoot using targets on the range, check out Infinity Targets, a self-healing target. We blast the shit out of those and um, we shoot like thousands of rounds. Yeah, we snakes. shot them up. Oh yeah, for for multiple episodes, 30 out of yeah. 6, we just blasted the crap out of them. And obviously check out Haley Strategic if you're looking more of that contemporary gear. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, uh, Jack, go ahead and introduce yourself to, uh, to the guys who don't know you. Obviously, we've been doing a lot of mm. stuff throughout the years, but yeah, feel free. Yeah, um, so we started a new YouTube channel recently called Clone or Die. You can probably link it in the description, check it out. Um, basically focused around military clones and equipment from various conflicts of basically the past hundred years. Um, and we're going to start doing more content uh, like that, both serious and a comedic aspect as well. Yeah, if, you, if you guys didn't know, Jack, Jack's a pretty funny guy. It's really uh, crazy out here. Oh my God! Right there! I got him! Uh, but yeah, check out Clone or Die. Check out his Instagram because he's got some really funny clips on there. So. The gear that we have, I guess the easiest place to start off is with the rifles. And this is like one of, I mean, probably one of both of our favorite eras of guns. You can pick up yours, yeah. you can pick up mine. Um, the carry handle generation. And it was when the carry handle guns were starting to get modernized. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the lessons learned here translated into what you know we have today. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, what the US Army was using during the majority of the GWAT, the lessons learned from body armor, weapons, and kit, all translated into the, the new war, essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, as you can see, both of our guns have um, their carry handle guns. Mine is a PSA 723, but in all honesty, the way it's actually configured, with, especially with the upper, 
It's more like you'd say like a 653. Yeah, it would be that 653. Mine would be a 723 um, because mine has a brass deflector uh -huh. right here, which that one is missing. Um, I also have a later model 723 because mine has the M4 profile barrel. It's kind of covered by my uh -huh. flashlight, but it's not the skinny profile like yeah, on the A1. Pencil barrel. Yeah. Uh, I've, I'm running an A3000, um, which is a very accurate optic, mm -hmm. but like Larry Vickers, anyone who's ever used this before, they'll actually tell you they'll like, they like the other aim points because the knobs wouldn't break as much and some of them can hold bigger batteries. Yeah. So this, it's, a, it's an okay optic, but it's not as uh, robust and not as... Um, comprehensive as I could say like that one's no. went on. So this is a 2000 right here um, which the guys in Panama would have used mm -hmm. and there were some holdovers that still had the 2000 but most guys would have had the 3000 or the 5000 by then. Yeah and then yours also has a light now which kind of yeah. cool is like a lot of these weapons kind of kicked off like again like kind of the start mm -hmm. of a lot of these companies like aim points were really just starting to really get off the ground. Yeah. Um, Surefire back then known as laser products with their flashlight, because it's a 6P variant, correct? This is a Surefire 660, 660 but the 6, yeah. 6P variant is slightly smaller, but it was used too. They were both used congruently. So yeah, a couple different versions out there. Obviously, he's got his uh, clamp to the barrel, which is like another very popular configuration. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a newer ready mag on this gun, but the ready mag, the original OG ready mm -hmm. mag, was one of the configurations that a lot of guys you saw had on their weapons for keeping two mags on the gun. I know yours didn't have it, mine does, but no. like you'll see that variation across the board. Yeah, I mean, these rifles are really all over the place. There are guys with the flashlights on the handguards. There's one guy who put his handguards on sideways and he would use the vent holes to mount his flashlight and he had them like that. So it was really up to the user preference. Like every guy had what he liked and he set his rifle up like that. <laughs> no, it's very interesting to see like all the different variation because like guys were experimenting with all kinds of stuff, not just with the weapons, but with the gear as well. Mm. Um, I mean, for the most part, this is kind of your quintessential you know, Car 15 style weapon from that era, um, which is one of the reasons why I always loved it. But yeah, that's uh, more or less how we kind of set up our guns. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think they kind of cover both kind of styles in a very yeah. good way. But uh, that more or less concludes the rifle. Let's go over the uh, the kit. I know you got the chest rig there, the AWS yeah. chest rig. So I have a AWS Gen 1 chest rig, which um, is a reproduction of. It goes back to Panama again. That's when they first used them is in uh, 1989. Uh, so mine is like more of the green tan hue chest rig and it doesn't have like the nice buckles that you can use right here. Oh, yeah, like this one. Um, like this yeah. one right here has buckles you can clip into the chat, uh, into, into your plate carrier directly. Yeah. If you thought that was a new thing, nope, they did it in 1993. That's, that's cool. It's like that that concept yeah. has been around for a while, but didn't really pick up steam until like the mid 2000s, really. So these are actually pretty good chest rigs and they remained in use until the early 2000s with Delta. Mm -hmm. Um, they hold four rifle magazines in their main compartment, um, two, four pistol magazines uh, set up for 1911. Um, the radio, which would they be using these old Motorola uh, X, no, what are these? I'm trying to remember. M M5000? M3, something, something like, like that, that, yeah. I don't remember. They're they're super shitty and terrible. <laughs> yeah, they're not great. Surprisingly, uh, you can still find them. And like, um, I think when yeah. I bought mine, like it still had like a bat working battery and stuff. The battery's probably dead now, but like, these are some old mm -hmm. ass radios. <laughs> they're so, awful. Yeah, and then um, just, tr just trying to set up the comms for that is uh, a whole chore into its own. But um, mm. yeah, the chest rig holds. You can put a radio on one mm -hmm. side or either side, extra magazines, yeah. pistol mag pouches. It's actually very common to see guys with flashbangs on the front, on the front, like on the Gen 2, there's like elastic here. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously on the real one, the elastic one's a little more robust, but yeah, yeah. it's just flashbangs galore uh, for breaching and stuff. And of course, 1911 mags. Yeah, I mean, some guys would even just stick their 1911 in the extra pouch right here, yeah. which I have <laughs> magazines in, but you know, they didn't want to wear a holster, yeah. so that's what they did. <laughs> I use that pouch for extra magazines as well, yeah. but um, that that more or less covers the chest rig, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you actually made a good note when we were talking earlier, is that the green was actually kind of a mistake. They were actually like a, a brown color. Yeah, um, in the photos, they look green. So we thought they were green, but these are cameras from 40, 30 years ago. Um, they're not actually green, they're, they're brown. <laughs> so I got this before we knew that. <laughs> so my mistake, you know, cost me money. But... I still think the green still looks great with the yeah. kit. Um, it accents all the other stuff really well. Well, uh, now we talked about the chest rig. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the gun belt a little bit. Um, yeah. And by the way, if you're curious about some of the gear, a lot of the soft good um, gears like the chest rigs or the, mm -hmm. the replica FOSS vest, you can get that stuff from a couple different places. Uh, Squadron So Shop, mm -hmm. one of, he's a member 
Viper. Um, he makes a bunch of gear from that era, not just Delta kit, but still really great kit, stuff. And like it covers multiple eras, like I mean, ABA vests mm -hmm. for like the OG VBSS kit. Um, good quality stuff. And he, you can, if you need to get it sized for you, he can kind of work with you a little bit. So Squadron Sew Shop's one good place. And then Check and Gear is also another place where the stuff is commercially available where you can just click it and buy it right now. They make a lot of that stuff as well. But yeah, let's uh, check out your gun belt. Yeah, so Delta would have had uh, custom made Riggers belts that were made for them at the time. Uh, this is a little bit later Eagle Industries one, but it's exactly the same as, as the ones they would have used during that period. Um, the materials are just a little slightly more modern. Um, so what I have is a um, reproduction AWS 1911 mag pouch right here. Just my normal Alice um, M16 mag pouch. Ironically, they would actually not really use these for M16 mags a whole lot. Frags? Frag grenades, yeah, because you can fit five. You can fit one in each side and three in there and you get five grenades. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I've got a canteen pouch, my uh, Alice first aid kit, yep. um, which they would have. I have a saw pouch right here, which I can use as a dump pouch. Um, just throw whatever I need in there, magazines, etc., extra yeah, I, grenades. I noticed you had that big pouch on you. Like, oh, yeah, it's cool. super useful. Then I have a um, the AWS 1911 holster, and this is fucking terrible. <laughs> it pretty, is it's awful. It's pretty bad. Um, but <laughs> it's what they use, one of the two holsters they use during that time. Yeah. Um, in it. Well, they, they also used, um, like he was about to say, I think uh, the Sfireland 3004 series, not yeah. one, also the OG that, that one's amazing. Like, that one's fantastic. <laughs> you're talking about Sfireland <laughs> kicking ass, taking aims for decades. Um, um, yeah. I've got a custom 1911 in here. Uh, this one just happens to be a Wilson Combat. This one was made in the 90s, just a little bit later, but it's pretty indicative of most of the mods that um, Delta would have done to their 1911s at the time like the Novak Sights, extended beaver tail, it's got an extended trigger, the uh, combat hammer right there. Um, all standard mods that they would have done to their 1911s where they tuned them up from like old Colts or old Remingtons or stuff like that. 1911 just kept on going, man. Just kill, killing bad guys. Two world wars. <laughs> And Vietnam and Mogadishu. Yeah, and, and Iraq, and it just kept going. Wow, we still going. use it. They're, and they're still um, around, yeah. Then to top mine off, I just have a compass pouch where I can just throw whatever I need in there. I honestly keep my gloves in here when I'm not using them. But yeah. I think one thing that's cool too, I, I, I know it's like there's pictures of guys like putting their blood types on the uniform and their knee yeah, pads and stuff like that. I have like mine that. on my uniform right here. I think these are, are these original Alta knee pads. Yeah, these are original old Alta knee pads. Oh man, nice. Uh, new old stuff. From the 90s. Wow. That... You can even look at the buckle and tell that this is like old new stock. Yeah, my dad had bought these at some point and, and they were in the garage for 20 years. Lucky guy. And I pulled them out of the garage. So yeah, that's how I got them. I've got like newer ones. So like, you know, from like four feet away mm. they, they still look pretty good but like it is actually surprising to see what's changed and, and kind of to a degree what hasn't changed yeah on something even as simple as the knee pads like there's locking there's actually a version that's like even that. older than these ones are yeah they're talking about the, um, the knee pads no one, those ones are or? different i'm talking because mine um these are painted these um there are some the that are just grommets, left yeah. brass the yeah. grommets are just left brass and that's the even older ones that you see in some of the photos and that's one thing you'll notice too is oh. like the rangers had different knee pads there's like some m81 ones that um, Squadron So Shop also makes. Yeah. There's the Bike USA knee pads, which I cannot find for the life of me. They're those like ones a, are the best ones. Those, they're like a soft knee pad that really articulates with your body. Yeah. And I mean, that's what's kind of funny is that back then they were using so much cots or commercial off the shelf equipment. Mm -hmm. Like, even like, you know, kind of move pretty much really. That's even where the aim points and the <laughs> yeah. surefires came from. It's just like they went to the market. And like kind of hunting yeah, they're like, oh, what's available? Oh, we'll buy that and we'll throw it on our rifles. That's, our rifle, that's yeah. where this stuff came from. I mean, what's funny is in the last uh, video that Dirty Civilian put out, uh, Kyle Lamb talks about like the dot and like honestly, the, the dot's brightness and the size of the dots mm -hmm. weren't all that great. No, you have to then. run it on max. Better, better than like nothing though, but still like had a long way to go. Oh yeah, um, better than iron sights. <laughs> and speaking of gear, that kind of takes us to the helmets with like commercial mm -hmm. off the shelf stuff. It kind of hodgepodge mixed with military hardware. So you yeah. and I are both running the um, Seccom 5 yeah. headset. And I think, uh, yeah, you got you got a Protec helmet. I've got a Protec helmet. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of tell the generation because like they're to find the OG one with the white foam is yeah. pretty damn hard. Um, Cause this is more probably one of the newer. This is a newer one. Um, you can easily tell because the chin strap doesn't have the D ring. Oh yeah. Like yours does. I have an old one, but I 
Beats. don't want to use it for just this. <laughs> I do other stuff. Yeah, that's so. right. That's the one you use for your seal kit. Too. Yeah, yeah. So I do have an old one, but those old white foam ones, mm -hmm. those ones are like the ones you see. Black foam, I was used as well. You do see a guy who has a black foam mm -hmm. helmet. So that's not incorrect yeah. to have that, but it's just really the rivet style and the chin strap yeah. that's incorrect. My, yeah, minor yeah. differences there. Uh, and what's cool is you see, like, again, with everything else, you see wild variations Ton. of how they set up the helmet. There's guys um, that um, different have Different headsets. The, yeah. yeah, like these setcoms were modded, so these take a regular NATO plug and just plug them yeah. right into the PTT. They do look vibey as hell. They like, do look this, cool. It screams, yeah. the, I think the reason you and I probably picked it is because it screams 90s. It's uh, definitely 90s. <laughs> it screams um, 90s. There Plus, were... Just the, it's funny because it's literally like Velcroed and like taped onto the helmets. <laughs> and then yeah. you have like the strobe, like again, like they're just taking this skateboard mm -hmm. helmet, sanding it, putting Velcro on it, and then mm -hmm. putting like the old strobes on it. Like yours has got the original color, mine's yeah. painted. Uh, and then of course they put the anvis mounts on mm -hmm. them. So, and then like, I've got the bully goggles, you've got the sand wind dust style. Mm -hmm. And then of course, like the Anvis battery pack, like yeah, that's probably one of the coolest things in my opinion is seeing the old style Anvis um, 6.9 battery pack and the mount mm -hmm. on like helmets as these. Um, they're pretty damn cool. No, they're cool. And like you said, there's so much variation. Like there's the there's that modded helicopter headsets. There's the, the task one headsets. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different stuff that you get to see. Um, yeah, cause like, and then mine too. Yeah. Um, like uh, back then, night vision, they would be running my Anvis 6s, correct? Yeah, they would have Anvis 6s um, for Delta. So it's not like the movie where they have PBS 7s on or not. That didn't exist yet. <laughs> no, it's, no, that's true. Well, yeah. th keep in mind, when they made the movie, um, they, they kind of had to use what was available to them in quantity at the time, too. So considering mm -hmm. the... I would say even though the movie used newer kit the overall color palette and overall aesthetic was pretty close it's yeah just, you know when you have to like double and triple kit for an actor and stuff it's hard to find yeah stuff. It's i mean like in a museum us piecing this together for two or three people imagine doing it for 500 like, yeah we're, we're like you know if you have like i don't know 20 30 40 50 delta guys and now you got to double mm -hmm. and triple some of them for like stunts and backgrounds and stand-ins and stuff so that that's a whole mm -hmm. other thing um but yeah that's that's more or less the helmet, which I think just the silhouette look, it's such a unique look. Like yeah. when I when I first discovered um, the difference between the movie kit and the actual kit, that was the first thing I noticed. Like the helmet is like way different yeah. than the way they're set up in the movie. And you know, obviously for good reasons, they just didn't have the budget or, or the means to necessarily piece all that stuff together. Mm -hmm. They still did pretty good. Um, but yeah, I love the way the helmet looks. Um, of course, when it comes to gear, last but not least, mm -hmm. the actual armor system itself. So this is actually your Foss vest. Yeah, and see, you know it's a Delta fe vest because it's got a big fuck off American flag on the front <laughs> of it. And that means it's Delta, yeah. okay? because. Delta or no Delta, this is a hot kit right here. <laughs> now, um, these are like, these were like the NATO body armor of the time. This, the way this goes together is just terrible. Yeah. Oh. Um, but it's very 90s. Yep, <laughs> super 90s. Um, so they took these normal NATO Faust, uh, TG Faust body armors and Delta modified them. Um, they had their yeah, own the riggers that would mod them. them. And that's what these are representative of. They have these extra radio pockets added. Um, as well as some extra pockets on the front flap. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yep. Added right here. And that's yeah, that's if like that. And this would obviously like uh, when you wear the chest rig, this would be under the chest. Yeah, rig. this but is all covered. It's cool to see all those different mods. Mm -hmm. Rigger modified is the way to go. And my, you'll see mine actually has yeah. the backpack. Like well, you'll see this footage right here. Um, <laughs> you know that it has the backpack put on. Yours mm -hmm. doesn't, but that's no. what's cool. But there's a lot you of variations. Clip it some in guys ran right them, there. some guys didn't. Yeah. And you know, Delta was um, their riggers were modifying stuff for years. It's pretty, you know, even going back to like Eagle Claw and whatnot, like their oh, jackets yeah. and stuff, which I actually have an Eagle Claw jacket signed by some mm -hmm. of the plank owners of Delta back there too. Um, but that's what's cool. It's like it's they took something that was available mm -hmm. and modified it. And this is kind of like right around that era where like, if you will, like the bulks of, well, I'm trying to remember what the actual proper nomenclature is, but that typical full vest style of body armor yeah. was really kicking in. I mean, even the regular that, body armor cummerbund's very similar to this as it's well. It's funny, like the bulks and the Mitch 2000 were actually two things that were developed indirectly in response to um, the Battle of Mogadishu because they needed more protection. Mm -hmm. um, because in Gothic Serpent, you know, they make that big thing in the movie, like, oh, you're not going to need your rear plate. Um, they didn't have rear plates in real life. They only had front plates, and then they had soft body armor in the front and back, and that's it. So if you get shot in the back, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't have ballistic helmets. Oh, yeah. So if you got shot in the helmet, that's so, plastic. With the RBRS4, so funny story, like, yeah. um, I think... 
right after the battle, a bunch of the SEAL, SEAL Team 6 guys mm -hmm. actually sent their helmets to the guys in Mogadishu or they sent them with the squadron that was going to Mogadishu like immediately after because a lot of the guys didn't have ballistic health. So that's where you'll start to see like guys running around with the RBR S4 for a while and then you know immediately after that it gets replaced by the Mitch uh, 2002 yeah. towards the beginning towards of the, the later of the 90s. Yeah, or yeah, later 90s or the GWAT. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the armor system itself which is really cool and it's you'll see as just a lot of the lessons learned there like he was saying mm -hmm. carried over like the way the chest rigs clip on the optics and the light setups of the weapons the headsets mm -hmm. all were kind of like inching us towards the future even like the where the battery packs were i mean that i mean we still mount battery packs like this to this day we and still use and anvis this, mounts what, yep still use same exact stuff. ones same <laughs> same <laughs> damn ones right um and then last but not least the eyewear too, which is pretty cool. Now these are Oakley razor blades. They don't have like the straight arm, which I believe a lot of the guys have the straight arm yeah. ones, but uh, still pretty cool. Delta wears Oakleys. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, like, uh, you know, Oakley razor blades, another commercial off the shelf item that kind of became a signature of guys in the unit and of special operations back then um, that of course Rangers weren't really allowed to wear, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, the movie portrays, you know, like Captain Steel and some of the other characters is kind of like hard asses when they really weren't. But. Yeah. And what's cool, and, and even though we don't have the Ranger kit here, yeah, I have it in the room, but I don't yeah. have it right here, right here, is that um, even with the weapons and gear, you'll notice even the stuff the Rangers were using was leaps and bounds ahead of even where it was mm -hmm. kind of portrayed in the movie. Like the gear was pretty correct, some variation. Yeah. The weapons, like they had, what, 727s back then. Yeah, with, so they would have 727s, which is exactly this rifle with A2 sights on it instead of the A1 sights. And they had aim point five thousands, and they had flashlights too. So their rifles were set up pretty similar So to like Delta. they were already like not too far behind Delta yeah. even, you know, back then. So, and and now obviously like they have their own, like they their own detachments that are equivalent to other tier one units and whatnot too. Yeah. So it's actually very cool to see just how far even the Ranger it was back then and then you can kind of see like the inkling of where they were going to go in the future um and then last but not least because i know i said that before the uniforms you know modified uniforms now um basically we just got your typical dcus mm -hmm. the pockets that are down here and get moved to the shoulders and this is kind of carrying on the original raid mod legacy if you will but i mean paratroopers yeah. paratroopers, paratroopers like the first ones to, uh, yeah raid to put mod pockets on the shoulders and vietnam yeah. And um, there's a little bit of variation again as well, but so much. But you'll typically find like Delta back then, black Velcro, mm -hmm. um, you know, flag on one side, you know, um, um, obviously blood type and whatnot. Yeah, pretty standard raid mod, and they might have. No, oh, I don't even think they had their name tapes on there actually. Some, <laughs> some, some they would some have some. Might have. Yeah, some guys do, some guys don't. It's just like, hey, we have black Velcro. Some guys had green Velcro. Some guys had tan. Some guys had no Velcro. Some guys didn't even have the pockets on the mm -hmm. shoulders. You know, it's just. And it's it's cool to see even back yeah. then, like in the early '90s, um, like guys were just modifying their uniforms and stuff, and that mm -hmm. the, that this was kind of a. Um, standard if you will um but yeah so that's like the last piece of the uniform and whatnot um but yeah we wanted to do this video kind of pay tribute to you know, the guys who fought in the battle and just kind of keep history alive keep educating people plus let's not gonna lie it was a lot of fun to run around the range <laughs> yeah. shoot the guns and stuff um speaking of which if you're into guns give airsoft a shot um there's actually a couple like a bunch of guys in the group that are also airsofters in the yeah. Force ranger group and even with our group out here mm -hmm. um it's a great way of you know, when you go shooting at the range, you're, you're testing your shooting ability, but your physical capability, your stamina, finding out if your gear has any problems or something mm -hmm. you need to troubleshoot, you'll definitely learn a lot of that doing airsoft and mill sim. And then if you're an airsofter and you want to get into guns, but you're not old enough, keep playing airsoft, go to events, all that stuff, and keep enjoying that hobby. And eventually when you're old enough, get guns, get training, get into that. I think you really need the best of both worlds to kind of the complete picture because yeah. there's a lot of great force on force opportunities, a lot of Milsim events as well. Um, but that more or less kind of covers the gear, the guns, everything in here in between. If you want to learn more about this stuff, check out the Task Force Ranger Facebook group on um, on Facebook. We'll put a link in the description so you can't miss it. And again, if you're looking for the gear, it's kind of hard to find a bunch of this stuff, but at least some it's, of the places we can point you in the right Yeah, it was like hard, um, but honestly, it's way more available now than when we started doing it. 
Oh yeah, especially um, with like you know, checking. Yeah, like there's there's so many good that. resources, and you know, the group is a fantastic place where if you don't know a question, you can simply just ask. And there's there's a lot of knowledgeable guys in there, from the weapons to the gear. Uh, I think in just in the last few years alone, this the Gothic Serpent kits kind of definitely had like a resurgent, mm -hmm. uh, resurgence, which is really great because it's important again, like I was saying, to keep history alive. But um, got anything else for the viewers there? I guess that covers it. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out Clone yeah. or Die with Jack and his buddy Clayton here. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be seeing us kind of collaborating, having some fun in the future. Um, but yeah, learn about the gear, check it out. Um, thank you guys for watching. And last but not least, if you want to help support my effort to fight gun control, I'll have a link in the description down below to buy some swag and whatnot. All the proceeds will go towards gun policy. Uh, towards kind of restoring our constitutional rights because that's what we need in this country. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. You know, a lot of people ask me, why do you do it? Free Applebee's, that's why I do it. The veteran discount. Just one thing I want to say to the camera. Man, I hate Mogadishu, Arizona. <laughs>